Hello, this is Marcel and today I wanted to quickly show the hair meshing functionality of Ornatrix hair plugin for Maya. To start off let me just quickly set up a hair and I'll be using a sphere this time instead of a character just for the simplicity of it and to make things extra easy to understand. So I have created my sphere and I will use the quick hair button to place some hair on it and by default we have a nice hair stack prepared for us which consists of a guide from mesh node, a hair from guides node and the render settings node. Let me just quickly go in and modify my hair shape by adding an edit guides shape operator and I will just brush the hair a little bit to give it some definition. So I can now hold down shift and drag and this will increase the size of my brush. So this doesn't need to be artistic or anything, I just want to demonstrate the meshing functionality on hair that is just not straight sticking out of the mesh. So if I click the top operator on my stack and if I press the mesh from strands button, the hair gets converted into a mesh object. And this shape in Maya is actually a mesh now, so I can go and render it out as a mesh. Let me just turn off the hair from guides operator so we have fewer hairs and they're easier to see. And if we go into the mesh from strands node, there are a few settings that we can change and I will talk a little bit about each one of them. So by default we have a mesh type set to ribbon which means that we have a flat polygon strip representing each hair strand and if I go to my render settings node I can control the width of this ribbon as well as its shape from the root to the tip. So I'm just going to make the shape pretty uniform and you can see all the ribbons that make up the hair. I can also change the mesh type to cylindrical and in this case instead of ribbon we get a cylinder representing each hair. This is nice for cases when you want the hair to be more realistic and to be able to render it from every angle. And if I go back to mesh from strands I can change the side count to make it more detailed and to have the cylinders have more cross sections so they will be smoother. Again, I can go back to my render settings node and if I want the tips to be tapered at the end, I can just decrease the value at the end of the graph like so. One last option that we have in mesh from strands node is proxy mesh option. If I turn it on by default, it, it will clear the whole mesh and the reason for that is because we do not have any proxy mesh as assigned. A proxy mesh is basically another object existing inside your Maya scene which you can use to define the shape of each hair strand. So let me go into my polygons and I'll create a couple of proxy shapes. So I might use torus and I'll just use box as two of my proxy shapes. I'll go to my torus and just decrease the detail a little bit to make it simpler overall. So I'm going to select back my hair and go back to the mesh from strands operator and add my first proxy mesh which is my torus. And as I add it, you can see that it's kind of taking the torus and it's stretching it along the shape of the strand. I can actually go back to my edit guide shape and go back into the brushing mode and continue brushing. And as a brush it will deform the proxy meshes along the curvature of each one of my strands. And right now we only have one proxy mesh. I can just as easily go and add my box proxy mesh and now it's going to selectively pick box and torus for different strands in my hair shape at random. I can also go back to my proxy shapes themselves so I can go to my torus and I can edit this using any mesh operator or I can change the parametric values to for example increase the subdivision axis or maybe I can change the section radius to make it bigger or any other things that I might want to tweak in this area. And as you can see all of this is very parametric and non-destructive so all of this is part of the hair history. There are a few things I can control about my proxy meshes as well. For example I can make it not inherit the width and in this case it's going to take my torus and my box and preserve the original size and just stretch them over the shape of the strand or I can have the uniform scale which will make them not have any scale differences along the strand itself and other things like inheriting the shape of the strand or inheriting rotation. And just like with the other mesh types, I can go back into my render settings node and I can change the size of my strands or I can taper them towards the end or generally change the size of my strands. Let me just go back to the mesh from strands node and assign the ribbon type again, which will make my hair strips flat. And you might notice that right now the strips are all kind of facing different directions this might not be desirable. So to control this in Ornatrix we have a special operator called strand rotate operator. If I add this in my stack right below the mesh from strands node I can actually control the rotations or the twist of each strands. This has a global angle parameter so if I use this 
it will change the twist of the strand globally. I can maybe also introduce some chaos into this and I can control the global angle multiplier which allows you to assign a map or you can even assign a strand channel which we will cover in a future video. There is another option here called orient based on strand shape and if you click this option and if you set the global angle to zero it will actually orient the strands to be rotated in a way where they're always facing the distribution mesh and this option is particularly useful if you are doing something like feathers so I can go back to my render settings operator and I can define the feather shape for the ribbons so it might be tapered towards the end and it might have like a little stem in the beginning and I now have a little feather shape and all it needs is maybe a little feather texture map to create a fully feathered character that can be parametrically modified or edited at any time in the future. So one last thing I wanted to cover is another option called is guide mesh and if you press this Ornatrix is going to add extra information to each of the strands which will allow the strands to become guides down the pipeline. This means that you can now select your mesh from strands node operator and use the guides from guide mesh shelf button to add the guides from guide mesh node and this node will convert your mesh back into guides and the usefulness of this feature comes from the fact that you can use mesh operators on your meshed hair such as cloth simulation or deformers like lattice and edit the hair this way and then you can convert it back into guides which can be converted into hair and you can continue using this hair and add further Ornatrix operators in your hair stack. So just to visualize how all of this looks I can open the hypergraph connections and you can see that we have our end result hair shape which is connected to hair from guides and we have our guides from mesh node connected to the mesh from strands node over here. This might look a little bit complicated and overwhelming at first but you have to realize that between here and here we have a mesh going through this connection and if you want to insert any kind of mesh operator you can just break this connection and insert new nodes in this space and we might cover how to do that in a future video just to keep this one a little bit more simple so I hope you can take away a little bit about how mesh from strands node in Ornatrix for Maya works and some of the benefits that it brings along with it as well as the ability to rotate your strands and the ability to convert your mesh back into guides. Thank you for watching.